Hello Crosswalk, this is Amanda Eidelman here and I am here to talk about my article, How Do You Know If Foster Care Is For You? Uh, the first thing I want to share, um, if you don't listen to anything else in this video, is that if fostering is on your heart, um, really my best advice for you is just to take the first step. Um, that would look like contacting your local DSS or um, organizations in your area that um, do foster care training. Um, some of them that are common are um, UMFS, um, and usually most localities have a variety of private organizations that also will um, license you as foster parents in your state. But um, just checking out your county's um, local DSS is a great place to start. Typically, they would have information meetings or a parent resource um, person that can let you know what the process looks like. They would also walk you through what the requirements are. There's not a lot of requirements, thankfully. Um, you can be single. You don't have to have a ton of money. You don't even have to have um, a room dedicated to the child in care. They do need their own bed and kind of enough space in their bedroom that they will be comfortable, but they don't have to have their own room in most cases. Um, so there's, there's not a lot of requirements as far as legal requirements, but um, it's important to check that out and then just take those first steps, um, get the information, figure out what the training looks like in your area. And when we went through training, you know, our trainer was amazing, but she sort of articulated that you'll go through this class with three possible outcomes. Yes, fostering is for me. I want to do it now. Uh, the second possible outcome is maybe this is something that I would need to do later on in life because I'm not um, in a position or in a life stage where it's, it's going to work well for us right now. Or maybe number three is no, fostering is not for me, but um, in supporting people that are involved in child welfare doesn't always have to look like fostering. It can uh, look like bringing meals. It can look like supporting birth moms. It can look like uh, offering appreciation to super overworked social workers. Um, it can look like a ministry that focuses on, you know, your school system, the jail system, um, you know, at-risk moms. There's so much that can be done to help support those that are in the foster care system or vulnerable to entering the care system. And so do not feel limited that the only way to help is this one role. It's a really important role. It makes a huge impact and for sure will change your life forever, but it's also a lot and not everyone's equipped for it. So. That's my initial amazing first advice for you. Just take the first step, figure out the requirements, tr start a training course. And once you get into it, once you really hear what is required of you, you'll have a better understanding of what you are really able to say yes to. And the training is super helpful. Even if you don't become a foster parent, it helps you to be trauma informed. It helps you to understand what other foster parents and social workers are sort of walking through in your community it grows a lot of empathy so it's really something that everyone should do and you can't say yes to a child if you're not a licensed foster parent um that and it's a pretty involved in most localities process so that really is important um you're always going to be on the sidelines if you're not licensed and once you're licensed, there's no pressure to say yes to a case. You know, you can say no. There's a whole group of people in your locality that are licensed. So if you don't feel like at that moment, it's a good time to take in a child, you definitely can say no. And that was some of the best advice we got was, you know, say no more than yes, because every month, every season changes, your heart changes, what's going on in your home changes. And um, while it's, really great work and worth the extra effort. Um, it's also not helpful to a child or a family in crisis to say yes and you actually aren't equipped 
um, in that season to really support them well because then that child ends up being pushed around more and, and that equals more trauma for them. So um, your guess needs to be really um, heartfelt and intentional and, and you need to be equipped um, in your home for that child in that situation, even though there's not a lot of information that comes <laughs> pre yes, but, but all that to say, um, you know, getting licensed allows you to even make that decision. So some of my points, um, in my article, I'm just gonna go through them quickly. I, I could talk about this all day. Um, first of all, let me give you like the really brief story of our foster parent journey. We became foster parents in 2000. 19 we got our first placement um in february of 2020 so right before covid shut down she was with us actually when things went a little crazy and she was a three month old sweetest baby girl and we were able to see her reunified with her family which was beautiful we loved it our our kids we have three biological children um at the time i think they were eight six three uh, but don't quote me on that um so they fell in love with her immediately um and and it was really beautiful to see her reunified um with her family they were so happy had a really um awesome grandma that she was able to take care of her and then um didn't hear much for a long time because of covid and we then in january no sorry February 5th of 2021, our soon to be son joined our family um, and he's been with us since then. And we are now in the adoption process and that's been a beautiful thing um, and definitely taken a lot of patience and faith to walk through all the months of, okay, what's 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 gonna happen? Um, and, and now we're just seeking God to see what comes next for us. Um, so I'm sure he will be faithful to let us know we ended up being foster parents sort of by just the holy spirit putting it on our heart um we prayed for a season about what was the next faith step he had for us and our kids were young we kind of felt like well maybe fostering is something we would do later in our lives um and god really helped us push past those fears of letting a, a child in need come into our home while we were also raising our own kids um and it's, it's been a beautiful thing for our family. Our, our bio kids have loved every kid that we've had in our home so wholeheartedly they're, they're in it. And I honestly think that having bio kids is an asset um, to this process because they are able to offer extra love and healing and support and comfort to a child that sometimes has a harder time with adults because of their trauma history. So, um, we um, have made the rule for our family that not to take a child older than our youngest. And that's also because our heart is also open to adoption and our kids have expressed a desire to respect birth order. So that that has um, been sort of our guiding you know, principle, um, but families say yes in all different ways. Um, I hope one day that we are able to be the family that has you know, teens and all different ages, but right now that's, that's where our yes is. And so if you're considering this, I, I encourage you to be comfortable with whatever your yes is. You know, when you go to training, they focus heavily on older teens, which is a huge issue. And if you're in a place that you feel comfortable doing that work, it's, it's definitely needed, but don't feel like you're not doing great work. If you know, you're saying I can take you know, one and under. Giving up sleep for a child that is in care um, and needs 24 seven love and, and you know, support is, is a huge gift and it is a huge undertaking, just like giving up sleep and child and giving up time and care for a teenager that needs a, a safe places too. So, and, and all ages um, end up in care for all different reasons. So just encourage you to, you know, figure out what your yes is and, and go for it. Um, so that's my first point. Don't let fear hold you back. Um, basically while you go through training, while you talk to other people, um, and even your own brain is going to tell you there's a lot of reasons not to do this work. It's hard. It's scary. Um, it requires a lot of you. There's 
no money in it. <laughs> um, there's a lot of misunderstandings. There's a lot of your heart on the line almost automatically for these kids. Um, there's messiness. The system's broken. I mean, I could just go on all day why fostering is a terrible gig. But, you know, it's it's um, it's really worthwhile. Good work despite all of that. It's definitely a servant role. Um, takes a lot of humility. So um, don't let the fear that's going to be in your mind stop you from stepping forward if this is what God has placed on your heart. Um, like I already talked about, just go to the interest meeting, take the first step, get trained. Um, because you can't know what it really is without sort of investigating. <clears throat> the fourth point was grow your expertise. Um, so there's a lot, a lot that comes with fostering. And then if you take an adoptive role down the line, it's a whole different thing. Um, and it really requires us as parents to lean into training, to resources, to hearing the stories of adoptees um, and other foster parents in a really big way because it's just such a big learning process and every kid is different. Um, <clears throat> trauma rewires children's brains in, in very significant ways. So there's a lot of empathy needed um, to really do this work well, a lot of patience. Um, so some of the resources I listed was the Honestly Adoption podcast. I love, love that podcast. They have episodes on like everything and they have fostered and adopted several kids. So they have a lot of, um, and their children have a lot of needs. So, um, and their family is a transracial family. So they basically have experience that goes across the board and they bring in a lot of good experts on their podcast. Jamie Finn with Foster the Family. Her book is so good. I definitely recommend reading it. Um, if you're considering this, it will like ignite a passion in you and following her online is great. Tori Hope Peterson, she's releasing a book called Fostered. I haven't read it yet, but I can't wait to. She is incredible. She's a former foster youth, a believer. She always points back to Jesus. And just hearing her perspective is huge um, and really helpful um, just to get an insight and a lived experience as a foster youth. And then um, I didn't list this one, but I also love the real life foster mom. She is on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, she's fostered all different ages and stages and makes it look, you know, easy. <laughs> But she's also very real, so she's a great um, person to follow online just to get an insight into the work in the heart of God in in this realm. Um, and then five, my fifth point was grow your support and pray fervently. You're going to need people to walk alongside you, babysitters, people who are going to show up with like formula and diapers when, you know, if you're getting a placement in an hour or um, if it's it's a teen, you know, somebody who's going to show up with the right size clothing or the right toiletries. Um, so here, grow that network. Thankfully now, anybody who you feel comfortable babysitting your biological kids or you'd feel safe um, leaving a foster child with can babysit. So that's huge. So your network can be anyone that you trust. Um, and you know, it's, it's a privilege for them to be involved in the work too and, and show love to these kids. Uh, you know, it, it, they should grow and have a network that looks like more than just your family. And praying is huge. Um, praying for wisdom on which places to take. Um, praying for the children that you're going to care for. Praying that God will guide and protect your family. Um, and, and also that he's protecting and working on behalf of the kids in your situations. There's so much darkness that lives in this world. And, um, I think prayer is huge. Um, so I just encourage you to continue to pray. There's my little people walking in the back. <laughs> um, and I probably could talk about this all day, so I'll try to restrain myself and <laughs> cut it, cut it off. Um, but I just wanted to say that, you know, we went into fostering feeling like it was like a surrender, obedience, a sacrifice, and definitely all those things are true. Um, 
but what we've been surprised to find that it has been such a gift to us you know it was a gift to foster the little girl that went home even though we were sad to see her go and i cannot imagine our lives without our soon-to-be son we love him to the moon and back and i can't wait to see what else god does with our story um through fostering so best of luck to you thank you